All right, National Cabinet now delayed, of course, to Friday due to the PM's uh, COVID diagnosis. And the issue of energy and uh, the state squabbling with the federal government over it, though, hasn't quietened down at all. Joining me now, political editor here at Sky News, Andrew Clannell. These disagreements uh, squaring off with state premiers, the PM, of course, uh, COVID diagnosis. It feels like we're back in the pandemic, Andrew. <laughs> what do you expect is going to happen? Well, I think right now, I'm not convinced they'll come to an agreement on the coal price cap, which is what they want the states to do. It's been put to me today, Peter, they're prepared to throw some money at New South Wales and Queensland, and I imagine quite a bit. So it's a question of whether that does the job, but I think they'll have problems with New South Wales. So, look, uh, things can change a lot between now and Friday. I suspect the PM's grateful to have that, that extra couple of days to negotiate, to be frank. But uh, at the moment, I'd say they'd be uh, signing up to a gas price cap. They don't need the states for that. And on the coal price mm. cap, they might not get there. They might get there. They might not get there. It depends how much money they put up. And there's still a fear out of this that apart from the fact it can distort the market, if it's in place for too long, it can discourage investment, that it's not going to be as effective as the government might want in reducing power bills and gas bills because it's kind of indirect. So I've thought for a long time, in, in fact, since the budget, that regardless of the warnings from Philip Lowe and co about inflation, the most likely outcome in the long run on this or in the medium term is some sort of rebate or subsidy on power bills by the May budget. That would be my uh, New Year's tip for you, Peter. I guess the issue there is inflation. It has the stimulatory impact, depending on how it's delivered. And I look at the politics of this. So you've got, in Australia, the ramifications of a hot summer, not dissimilar to Europe and their cold winter and an impact on people's power bills. You've got Christmas when people spend that big. You've got no, no one wants that February credit card bill when it lands. Uh, you've got a return, obviously, of Parliament by then. They can't let January, December and January slide without giving some sort of sense that they can get this moving. And, of course, we've got this rate rise today. Throw that into the mix. Any wonder people think that they're doing it tough. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the rate rises have been nothing short of brutal, Peter. Uh, let's face it. They've been going since May every single month and they've gone up 3%, which means it's not just the 3.1 official cash rate. It's more like 5 to 6 you're paying. It's a dreadful shock to household budgets. If you've recently bought, you are really copping it. And uh, power bills and I increased price of groceries on top of that, they've got a problem. It's hard to escape the conclusion the federal government wants to be seen to be doing something in the first instance on this. Whether the caps will be effective enough remains to be seen. I don't think there will be much mm. other option for the New South Wales government in a pre-election environment given they have a budget coming down on February 6 to introduce some sort of relief directly on power bills. I think they'll just politically have to. All right, let's go to the wash-up of the uh, May federal election. Labor's got its election review released overnight. 27 recommendations, 62-page report. Nice and short when you win. The number one finding, of course, was Scott Morrison was Labor's best asset. I think we all can agree on that hardly surprised there. But what were the key vulnerabilities Labor identified? Because, you know, next time round, they're not going to have the benefit of the baggage there with Scott Morrison. Well, it's Queensland, it's Tasmania, it's out of Melbourne and it's Western Sydney. In short, Peter, in which... And, you know, cost of living and their policy of lifting wages gets a mention in terms of that the, they'll have the benefit of incumbency next time. They won't have the benefit of Scott Morrison's unpopularity, but they'll have that. So the mm -hmm. report basically says you need to make every post a winner and you need to keep those inner city votes but find those outer suburban votes and cost of living plays a big role there. So there are a lot of challenges for Labor, but I guess there's a lot of opportunity too. We've seen the power of incumbency in first terms really help governments. They couldn't possibly get a lower oh, primary it. vote, could they? Maybe they could if the economy goes south, but that's the way they need to sort of optimistically look at it, I think. 
Yeah, we'll watch it next year with that first uh, first real budget in the normal cycle, and that's the one that you would expect the way the election works, three-year terms. We'll see some pain there, as well as likely, as you mentioned before, subsidies.